Hello kids, it's teacher Didi for a new science video. So today we will answer the question Were the dragon ever real? So you know dragons the magical animals uh, animal who can fly, who can spread out fire. So we'll see mm, Is it true? Or is it just a story for for kids and adults? We will see that together. dragon I saw the other day. I thought, is that real fire? Turns out it's a little trick. Spraying water with a red light behind it. Someone named Darian has a question about dragons. Let's give him a call now. Hi, Dad. Hi, Darian. I have a question for you. Were dragons ever real? That's a great question. Dragons are something depicted in all kinds of stories and movies. Whether the dragon Harry Potter faces in The Goblet of Fire, Pete's dragon, How to Train Your Dragon. Maybe you have a favorite dragon story of your own. But it seems pretty clear that dragons don't exist today. I mean, if they did, you would probably have seen one by now, right? Like in a zoo, for example, or at least in nature videos about real-life wild animals. Scientists have explored almost every corner of the globe, from the highest mountains to the farthest islands, and not one of them has ever discovered a real-life dragon. Okay, so they don't exist today, but could dragons have been real? Could they have been something that used to live on Earth? Maybe you're thinking, no way. Dragons are only something we made up in stories we tell. But consider this. It isn't just today that we tell stories of dragons. People have been telling stories of dragons for thousands of years. Like, if you've heard of the ancient Greeks and Romans, you might have heard their stories of dragons, like the Hydra killed by Hercules. Or the ancient Norse people, like the Vikings, also have stories of animals like dragons, and they would carve images of dragons' heads onto their boats. And these are just stories of ancient cultures in Europe. What's really interesting? Stories of dragons come from ancient cultures all around the world, not just one place. In many cultures in Asia, dragons are featured in lots of stories. In Japan, for example, a story was told that the first ruler of Japan was supposedly the grandson of a dragon. So symbols of dragons were placed on clothing, buildings, vases, and other things as symbols of the ruler's power. How is it possible that people from completely different places, on opposite sides of the world, would all have ancient stories of dragons? What do you think? Kids, it's an interesting question. So now we are agree that the dragon doesn't exist because we don't see dragon in a zoo. That doesn't see dragon um, in every corner of the earth. Human travel, we never see dragon. So why we 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 think because in many countries there is story about uh, dragon, not not only in Asia, in Europe also, and um, so. We can consider a dragon like a big snake, very big snake, uh, capable to fly and capable to 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 uh, to make fire. But imagine uh, if one human find some dinosaur bones, and you know there is flying dinosaur before, so you could consider it's a dragon. It's not, but you 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 thought is it? So maybe it's one of the possible answer we will see that together
Well, it's tempting to think maybe dragons were real, but just a long time ago. There's another explanation, though. Ancient people all around the world might have discovered things like these. Giant fossil reptile bones that they found in the ground. If they noticed these, it probably would have made them really wonder. You see, they'd never have seen the bones of an animal so large before. We know today that when we find giant fossil reptile bones, it's usually those of dinosaurs. But you see, ancient people didn't have an understanding of dinosaurs yet. They didn't realize that dinosaurs had gone extinct or even existed. People weren't alive at the same time as dinosaurs. But if some of these ancient people happened to discover fossil dinosaur bones and then tried to imagine what these animals might have looked like in real life, it's possible that this is how stories of dragons began. This is just one idea. There are other explanations for how the idea of dragons might have started. But even though dragons were not ever something real, dinosaurs were. And when you stop and think about it, dinosaurs were probably not that different from how we depict dragons. While we don't know of any dinosaurs that could breathe fire, we do find fossils of prehistoric beasts that could fly, the pterosaurs. While technically not dinosaurs, they were a type of prehistoric reptile and some of them were huge, just like dragons. In terms of their huge size and the way that they probably looked, both dinosaurs and pterosaurs might have been the closest thing that planet Earth has ever had to real-life dragons. But there are lots of smaller animals alive today which have traits that do resemble those of dragons. For example, this lizard doesn't fly, but it glides from tree to tree. In honor of dragons, we even call it a, a dragon. Draco Volans, the flying dragon. It doesn't breathe fire, but in its appearance and its ability to glide, it's fun to think of it as being like a mini dragon. And then there's this, too. The largest lizard in the the world, the Komodo. But in honor of dragons, its full name is the Komodo dragon because it kind of looks like a dragon. And while there are no animals that we know of that can do anything even remotely close to fire breathing, there, there is this. It's called a bombardier beetle. It has the ability to shoot a hot liquid as one of its defenses. Watch ant gets close to it. You'll see it shoot it, right? There. This liquid gets so hot that it burns. This guy got a bombardier beetle stuck in his bicycle helmet, and he said it felt like he had hot lava on his skin. So in summary, dragons were never real, at least not the kind depicted in stories. But it's possible that stories of dragons were ancient people people's way of making sense of dinosaur fossils. Either way, real world animals once lived and do live today, which are every bit as amazing and interesting as dragons. That's all for this week's question. Thanks, Darian, for asking it. The world is full of incredible wonders. Before you vote on next week's question, Okay, we will pass that quickly. That are just as interesting as ones from stories. And see if we have bonus. Yes, so kid, we can continue the lesson with some fun facts. So we will see today the top five of the weirdest creatures that are actually will. Okay, dinosaur doesn't exist, but we have funny creature on Earth, and we will see that now. Wow, check this out. This creature is the type of armadillo. Okay. Yes, it's weird. It looks like 
a mouse with the worms why do you think it has those scales on this back so the scales is that huh? that it scales okay which animal have scales we have snakes web tiles web tiles have scales and fish fish have scales is different of mammals because mammals will have hair like a dog have hair okay so why do you think he had those scale on his back? Maybe for protection? Aha. So some armadillos curl up into a ball to defend themselves. Those scales act like a shield. Yes, for protection. Hmm. Okay, number four now. Oh. It's, this is called a tarsier. It's a primate. The same family that includes monkey. It's very, very small. Big eyes. Why do you think its eyes are so big? Aha, why? <laughs> I turn his head like a crazy monkey. Okay, I think it's because he lives during the night. Yeah, tarsier are nocturnal. They only come out at night. Bigger, help, bigger eyes help them to see better in the dark. Okay, number three. Okay. Believe it or not, this is real. This is called a star nose mole. So. <laughs> oh, la, 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 la. It's not very handsome. The star nose mole are as this strange tentacle on its snout. What do you think it's use them for? So what do you think? Maybe for it? Maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Most live underground and have poor eyesight. This mole use this to feel around in the dark. Okay, it's like a sensor a captor and can help, help it to to find a good direction and escape to danger. Okay, number two. We have now oh, tardigrade. Scientists keep discovering new animals in the deep area. This one we discovered a few years ago. Oh, I'm not sure. Some people call it the headless chicken fish, but it's not actually a fish. Can you guess what is it? Wow! It's like a... Mm, I don't really know. This is actually a type of animal called a sea cucumber. Oh, okay. They are related to sea star, starfish. Okay, I don't want to touch it. Huh? It looks dangerous. Wow, it's beautiful. Very beautiful. Okay, we we'll finish with number one. Uh, the last one. <laughs> Here is another one discovered recently on a deep sea dive. Can you guess its name? Uh, big noise. Big noisy. <laughs> it's called the blobfish. They live at depth of one kilometer, so it's very, very deep, huh? very, very deep, along the bottom of the ocean. That explains to why you have very weird face because these live very, very deeply, and uh, that explains why we just discovered now it uh, now. Okay, okay, kids. It's finished for today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. See you. Bye bye.